Go whack some golf balls off a cliff in Kremling for Father's Day. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. First, dozens gathered in the rain at Dillon Marina yesterday to remember Paul Kresge, a veteran sailor, skier, and cyclist who drowned on Lake Dillon last weekend. Marina manager Craig Simpson remembers Kresge as an advocate for sailing, from teaching junior sailors to tough love on the regatta course. One of my favorite things about him is that he was not afraid to say what was on his mind, kind of no matter what that was. And he was also not afraid to very quickly re return back to just super friendly Paul. Kresge's ties to the Dillon sailing community run deep, like Ren Arbuthnot, formerly of Summit Hockey, who learned to sail with Kresge as a kid. Paul was always giving me tips, you know, from the other boat, you know, just shouting, you need to do this better, you need to do that better. It was great, it was awesome. I, I love just hearing, hearing the, the constant banter, because, you know, kind of like hockey, there's chirping going on and sailing all the time. Then there was Hans Bucher who raced against Kresge at more than a dozen Dillon Open regattas and trusted him as a crewmate for Worlds and Nationals in the 80s and 90s. Never a disagreement. Uh, actually, uh, absolute safe comfort. That was, you know, that I felt never as safe as I was with him. Yesterday's memorial started with a flyover and ended with a flotilla in the rain. Kresge was 66. Father's Day weekend is laid back this summer, with no barbecue festival in Frisco or gold panning championships in Breckenridge. But up north in Kremling, the annual Kremling Days celebration marches on. Sky High News reports Kremling Days opens tonight with free drive-in movie at 8.30. They're showing Jumanji and opens in earnest tomorrow, 10 a.m., at a socially distant parade with no floats. Organizers are calling it a march instead. After the march is cliff golf, your chance to hit balls off the cliffs overlooking town. Registration starts 9 a.m. at Kremling Chamber. Clubs start swinging at 11 a.m. The most famous abandoned bus in Alaska has been airlifted to parts unknown. Anchorage Daily News reports on the state-approved removal of Fairbanks Bus 142, made famous in 1996 by Into the Wild, an international bestseller telling the story of Chris McCandless, the 24-year-old Virginia man who died there in 1992. Since then, at least 15 people have been lost, injured, or killed in search of the bus near the border of Denali National Park. A woman drowned in 2019, and this April, a Brazilian man was rescued after running out of food. Food. That was the last straw for Alaskan officials, who might put the bus on display in a safer, more accessible location. It has been there since 1961. The latest now on coronavirus and Vail Resorts. River Run Gondola at Keystone starts spinning again a week from today for scenic rides and hiking only. The bike park is closed. Breck Connect Gondola opens July 4th for access to the Gold Run Coaster and Alpine Slides. Epic Discovery and Bike Hall remain closed. Vail and Beaver Creek will open with similar limited operations July 1st, and every chairlift is open weekends only Friday through Sunday. Copper Mountain will be taking tea times for Copper Creek Golf Club July 3rd with resort operations likely opening for the holiday. Summit County confirms 268 cases of COVID-19 as of yesterday, one more than Wednesday, and 16 new tests. We will never forget the first time we heard this on UPN at Midnight, edited for TV. I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies. That was British actor Ian Holm as Ash, the murderous android in Ridley Scott's Alien from 1979. Holm died this morning in London at 88 years old of complications from Parkinson's. He played Henry V on stage, Bilbo Baggins on screen, and was nominated for an Oscar in 1981 as the Maverick track coach Sam Musabini in Chariots of Fire. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency, Summit Sheriff reminds paddlers and boaters parking on Dam Road to park in designated areas only and avoid crossing the road to reach the lake. Deputies have counted upwards of 150 cars every weekend at Guyberson Bay and other parking areas where speed limits are 45 miles per hour. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.